Good morning. All right, let's see. Let's get over to this. Wow. <laughs> My hair's a mess. It's okay. You can forgive me for that. Good morning. <laughs> it feels like it's been a while. A fine Saturday morning. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Let's jump into something. So, um, today, what I'll be working on, I, let me see if I actually have it in here, should have it in here, SMA Female Athletic, okay, so some people may have, you know, noticed that there was a, that I put a new, um, hey Joao, how you doing, um, this this female base mesh is available on my online platforms so you know if you're interested in checking it out it's uh, it's got topology and everything like that so you to play around with and whatnot uh, <laughs> hey Carlos good morning hello dazzler <laughs> hey JP how you doing so yeah today what I'm gonna do I have this idea that's going to be based kind of off of the Statue of Liberty. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm going to work on that. Um, I'm going to start off by changing maybe a couple of things with the... Uh, let's go ahead and put that up. Uh, changing a couple of things with the uh, the model. But then really, I'm going to get like pretty much right into posing. Um, so whenever I, like like just right off the bat, I'm just gonna start off posing. Um, what I wanna do when I pose a character, the first thing that I like to do is focus on the face. Um, the reason is, is that I can take full advantage of all the, all the symmetry uh, tools and everything like that without any kind of you know, room for glitch. <laughs> um, and then I can go ahead and move from <clears throat> from working on the face to moving and working on the whole body. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do. Um, gotta get hydrated. Got a new water bottle, which is pretty nice. Jimmy. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, man. Um. Joao, no, I, I actually don't have a concept for this one. I have I have an idea, and I kind of sketched it out a little bit the other day. Um, but yeah, it's kind of more of like the idea that I have in my head. So, so there's going to be a lot more of a conceptual sort of sort of uh, aspect to this character. Uh, a couple of the things I want to start off doing. I think I want to make the eyes smaller. Um, so I'm going to start off by grabbing. Let's turn off dynamic. I don't need it on right now. Um, let's grab those. Let's soften that out some. Soften it in both directions. And then uh, let's go ahead. One of the things that I did, I love keyboard shortcuts. I don't make keyboard shortcuts for everything, but like solo is one of those things that I, I have you know, a keyboard shortcut assigned to. Because like in Maya, for instance, I work in Maya a lot for my work. It's really, really helpful to me to uh, to be able to mirror some of the keyboard shortcuts. And so like solo selected in, in Maya is control one. So I went ahead and assigned control one to solo. So now I can just, you know, control one all day and it's going to kind of, you know, solo things out. It's pretty nice. <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's check this out. I'm going to grab my pizza boxes and I actually don't want the eyebrows but let's go ahead and take these eyes I'm gonna move them inward just a smidge okay I think that I think that'll look a little bit better now with the eyes though I, I do want to actually come over to the eyes I feel like it's been a while since I've worked in ZBrush it's kind of funny because I've been in purely inside of Maya for the last while. 
Um, let me see. Let's come down to poly paint. We'll say adjust colors. We'll say frame. And now what we can do. Oh, in fact, if we wanted to mask that before we get into that, it could be helpful. I have poly groups assigned, so that'll make it a lot easier to um, to adjust just those colors. So let's say adjust colors. Uh, if we want to, we can hide the mask too. Um, hide mask. Okay, so now we can just go through here and just kind of push and pull the hue. Um, the hue that I think I want to go for is either going to be a blue or a green. Um, let's try green. We'll pull the saturation down some. And then we'll kind of pull down this intensity too so it feels a little bit darker, a little bit more natural. Control H to hide the mask. And that looks pretty good. I like that. I'll keep it. You've been cheating on ZBrush? Yeah. Yeah, Maya's a tough, uh, tough mistress. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then breakfast this morning. I've got Mexican sweet bread. <laughs> Gotta go with the concha, man. It's so good. <laughs> it, my kids call it, uh, call it uh, the daddy treat. <laughs> but, yeah, how you doing, Quentin? I haven't seen you for a while. It's so good, dude. If you're ever out this way, or if we ever meet up, maybe I'll bring you bring you one. It's it's amazing, because like the the bakery at the supermarket across the street, they do a really good job at making it nice and nice and soft. The consistency of the bread's really nice, and then the the dulce on top, the the frosting, <laughs> um, it's it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> Jimmy, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Right now, I'm working for Netflix. Netflix Animation. I'm actually working inside of the uh, the Roll Doll franchise, which is really cool. Uh, it was actually just announced that uh, that uh, Netflix bought the Roll Doll company, which is pretty huge. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> But yeah, I'll be working on uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which is pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. It's 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 been challenging from the standpoint that uh, the artistic direction is very different from anything that I've ever done, <laughs> and it's different from any anything everybody else has done too on the team. So it's so in trying to to figure out how to make a show look the way that we're trying to push it. Uh, you know, I can't I can't really say a whole lot more about it, but it's it's been it's been challenging. Um, definitely a good challenge, though. Okay, Let's see if we can fix some of this. I think it got messed up when I moved it over. Kind of smooth it out some. Okay. So yeah. All right. It's a little bit better. <clears throat> okay. So facial expression. Um facial expression I want to go for I want it to feel a little bit aggressive. Um And so you know, a few things that I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to change like the eyebrow expression, a little bit of like the eye shape maybe. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to push those uh, push those eyes in just a little bit further again. Oh, in fact, let's let's do this. Mask it this way. Just so that we're getting a little bit more of that uh, of that eye socket. That way, I don't have to worry about the eyelid and how it lines up with itself. <laughs> okay, now let's go ahead and we'll push that in. Oh, the eye's still masked. <laughs> okay, now let's do this. 
Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Good grief. The, uh, I need to have mirror symmetry turned on. Okay, and I think I'll, I'll take a little bit of that angle away. There we go, I'm kind of liking that. Ooh, that'll be cool. Jimmy, cool, that is awesome. Yeah, dude, it's good to hear from you. Have fun with the kids, have fun with supper. Uh, I sculpted a new Pumbaa since I lost the old one. And, oh, I had no idea, dude. That Oh, no, I did know about that. You told me about that. Gonna be fun. See how it'll contrast from the old one. Yeah, I bet. I bet it'll be great, dude. <laughs> I bet it'll be great. That'll be fun. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. Good luck and have fun with supper. Bon appétit. <laughs> All right. Let me see. So a few things I want to do. I want to take away some of the forehead here. In fact, let's just invert the mask here so that we can. Kind of play with this a little bit. And then I might actually bring, let's bring the nose, let's play with the nose, give her a little bit more of a lip here, a little bit of a, not a lip, but like a, <laughs> a ridge. <laughs> kind of a change to that. One of the things that I do want is to have the uh, a little bit of a different sense of anatomy. I, I had, had originally created this character's base mesh um, for a character for the uh, School of Games um, mood board challenge back you know, a few months ago. Um, and And I really tried to push design and shape and style on that one and and uh oh okay all right let's go ahead i need to make a new folder for this so that i've got you know so i'm not saving over my base mesh because <laughs> that would be a pain let's see new folder lady liberty Lady Liberty underscore oh one because Quentin's not uh, reminding me to save. <laughs> Just kidding, brother. Just kidding. Okay, change some of these shapes here. And then I want to I want to be careful too in doing that that I don't get like weird ridges and weird high points. Man. Oh, there we go. I'm liking that. In fact, let's kind of take this. We'll pull the top of the back of the head down and in a little bit. A lot of these sorts of things. I mean, you got to kind of pick your battles. I mean, these uh, these areas of the head uh, on this particular character won't necessarily be seen. Um, but one of the things I do want to be careful of is that it does inform kind of the shape of the hair once I go through and start creating the hair. Um, and I'll have to go and, and kind of pick up some uh, some images. Yeah, in fact, I'm liking that a lot better than the, uh, than the original base mesh. Maybe I'll go through and... Uh, save that out and then uh, <laughs> I'll re-upload this to uh, to all the um, um, re-upload this to, to flip normals and to art station and to all that stuff oh man we're getting all sorts of stuff in here. dude Quinton I'm totally just teasing <laughs> oh you're using the force <laughs> good man <laughs> I knew I felt some sort of inner voice Two viewer raid, yeah! <laughs> I've never actually done a raid before. 
I mean, I've, I've had I've had a couple of raids, which is fun, which is great. It's 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 so uh, generous of you guys to come and sit down for another stream after <laughs> having been in a stream. But I've never I've never actually done one. How do you how do you do that? Is it inside of the? Uh, is it inside of the streaming portal or something, or do you just link? Like how do, how does that work? Yeah, let's kind of pull this in a little bit. I know this 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 point this part of the uh, process will take just a little bit of time, but it's it should hopefully be. Um, like once I get this going, then I should be able to <laughs> welcome to viewers. <laughs> Quentin, you're the man. <laughs> do slash raid in the name of so so you do slash raid and then space and then the name of the channel. Do you have to do like a uh do you have to do like an at or a or anything like that, or a hashtag, or it's like there are some some of these aspects of streaming culture that I I am trying to learn. <laughs> okay, okay, I think that I think that's good. I think this is this will be our new base mesh. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's do this. I'm going to version up from here just so that we have this base mesh to come back to. And let's go ahead and start working on facial expression. No add or space, okay. Or, or hashtag yes space, okay. Man, cool. I'll have to I'll have to try that out. Um, it, at the end of the stream, you, you guys will have to let me know like who, if you have a, a a channel that you'd like to plug once we uh, once we get going. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> when I stream on my personal channel, it doesn't like I don't usually have a whole bunch of um a whole bunch of people. Um sometimes here on Pixelogic though I get quite a bit and that's fun. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Let me say this Okay, and then let's change out to mask lasser. Oh, in fact, let's change out to select lasso too. Okay, one of the things that I'm really trying to do, oh shoot. I just really wanna make sure that these, um, that I have this nice crisp we can just come down here, do something like this, invert, control A, and I can just use that to kind of pull this uh, pull this brow over and down. And then you know, once I start getting that shape started, I'm trying to I'm trying to be careful that it doesn't come out too too far. Came out maybe a little bit too far. But I do want it to to get close, like the ridges, the uh, the edge loops to get close to each other because what that'll do is that'll help create a crease um, and that'll help create you know sharp defined shapes so now that I've done that now I can sharp now I can uh, soften that mask we'll just come and pull this over pardon me pull this over some That feels a little bit too strong, so I'm just going to kind of just tap it with smooth to to pull it back some. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then with the eyebrows themselves, we'll do something similar. This is kind of pull them down and in. One of the things that I'm trying to be careful of is that I have some nice clean shapes with my eyebrows. And so I'm trying to I'm trying to be aware of that and, and 
you know, push and pull things in a way that makes sense. So I'll try to take this corner and I'll kind of align that with the uh, with that ridge of the face, um, just because it helps to to kind of create a clean sort of shape. And if we heighten it just it's just a slight bit like that, it helps to also create a little bit more of a dynamic feel for you know the expression for the uh, for the anger helps to make it a little bit more readable. Uh, let me see. Let's come over here. Let's grab these eye these bottom eyelids, and we'll just kind of pull them up a little bit. Pull these cheeks up and out a little bit too. And let's start working on that mouth. Hidden geometry. Pog, pog, pog. <laughs> Hello, Tamil Nadu. That's a pretty cool name for a place. Where is that? That's not somewhere I've ever heard, heard of. Geography lesson today, guys. Tamil Nadu. Where is Tamil Nadu? Okay, let's see. Let's start posing this mouth. Now, this mouth, I have I have it split into two different polygroups, which will be helpful for making certain uh, selections. Sorry, I gotta take another bite of my another bite of the concha. Hm. So good. Happy Hispanic um, Happy Hispanic Heritage Month, guys. <laughs> It is so good. Yeah, check this out. This is easily my favorite uh, my favorite baked good. Qué chula. Te ves muy linda. So it's a sweetbread. It's kind of like a I mean, the closest thing I can relate it to is, um, is it's kind of like the Mexican version of a donut, but so much better, so much better, so good. Um, yeah, it's super good, and then it, and then it's got like this. It's not really like a frosting. It, it does have some sort of like sweet crumble on the top of it, and it's it's just I don't I don't even know. I don't even know. It's it's so so sweet. Um, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's amazing. And then the bread, just so you can see that kind of the inside of it. It's it's not spongy. It's like it's got like this really nice light bread sort of flavor. It's like a soft cookie. Yeah, kind of like a soft cookie. I don't know. It's it's one of those things. Some places, some places it depends on on kind of who's making them. Uh the bakery at the at the supermarket across the street does them so they're really nice and light and and they have like this really nice consistency to it. But I've also had some that are a little bit more spongy, some that are a little bit more cakey, some that are more cookie like. Oh yeah, the frosting. Yeah, the frosting is kind of like a like a soft cookie sort of texture. It's interesting. I really like them. I really really like them. <coughs> Where are you from, Stephen? I'm actually from here in the United States. Um, oops, I didn't want to do that actually. Let's see. Um, but. Um, I also lived for a time in in uh, in Chile. I love Chile, and yeah, so it's it's really great. Like, and then my uh, my in laws are from Nicaragua, and so um, I have a really strong connection to Hispanic heritage and, 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 and culture because like because I mean it's a huge part of my life you know 
Um, and then some of my best friends growing up, my neighbors, you know, just kind of grew up around it. And it's fun. I really like it. It's a whole different level of liveliness and, 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 you know, just, just, just love in general. I don't know. You know, I'm trying to figure out what exactly to do with this facial expression. So I might need to go in and kind of dig in. Either I'll either grab like a mirror and kind of experiment. <clears throat> a lot of times what I'll do is I'll I'll pull this out and I'll just use it to be able to kind of check out my own check out my own face. <laughs> India, okay, that's cool. Tamil Nadu. Is that southern India then? I'm just trying to think based off of like what it sounds like. What would it be? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I totally make things up. Just trying to think like. Maybe it's best to kind of keep keep the lips together more off to one side, maybe. Because one of the things that's going to be a little bit um, a little bit tricky to play with if I'm not careful is keeping the uh, keeping the right forms in the lips so I don't lose volumes. Losing volume is one of those things that gets really uh, really tricky. you got to keep a good eye on it when you're posing a character. Um, like right down in here I'm getting a lot of like lost volumes with this bottom lip so I'm trying to trying to be careful of that yeah how about everybody yeah so so we know that we've got somebody here from India that's great Seems like we saw a couple of people from Brazil uh, earlier. Uh, where's everybody else from? Uh, Jimmy, I think, is from Denmark. Uh, he he left, but you know, he's from Denmark. Uh, he actually works for. Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember what company he's at. He might have actually recently transitioned. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember who it was that just just got. Uh, just moved over to a different job. Detroit, Mexico. <laughs> Hidden geometry. Alfredo. Oh, um, from the ZBrush Summit a couple years back. Did you? You came to the ZBrush Summit a couple years back, right? Sydney. Welcome. 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 Tamil Nadu's in India. Very cool. Okay. Let me see. Okay, for right now, I think that expression. Uh, I haven't tried using thick skin to keep volumes. Um, every once in a while, I'll use things like um, what's it called? Like a like a cloth brush, and that works. That works all right. Um, it's one of the nice things about the cloth systems inside a ZBrush is how well, like how good of a job they do at um, preserving volumes, which is pretty nice. I'm going to take this and kind of pull this back and in a little bit. Just uh, that's 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 like way too much. 
Let's try softening that out just a little bit. sharpness in there and then I want to try to fix kind of some of what's happening here with this nostril it's getting kind of pulled I want it to feel like it's <clears throat> like it's part of the expression What's the difference between game characters and cinematic characters? Game characters are usually a lot less uh, less dense. So, like for instance, if I were working on a on a game, I'm pretty sure like games like God of War, uh, often their characters will get to be about this high in in resolution. Whereas you know characters for animation, they'll get you know, this will be like the lowest you'll you'll ever see them, but they have special render time processes that happen to smooth out the um, to smooth out the normals and to smooth out the 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 mesh. They use different displacement maps and things like that to to really get it to to smooth out. It's it's really quite incredible. Okay, I think I'm going to move into posing now. I think that this uh, I think that this will work really nicely for what I'm trying to do. So let's go ahead. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to let's let's do a quick search for a couple things. Let's come over here. We'll say um, woman flying forward. <laughs> I mean, I don't want it to be like a super. Like I don't want it to be like a superwoman pose, but I feel like I feel like kind of the idea that I'm looking for. Let me see. 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 You know what? Let's say. Let's say Wonder Woman flying forward. <coughs> Because she has a, like a much stronger pose when she's when she's flying, and that could be something that's kind of helpful. Sorry about that. Um, haven't really tried a lower poly like this. Wondering how it works. Um, like you haven't worked with a lower poly like that, or you haven't, uh, or or you haven't made one. Um, oh, that's kind of a neat, nice. Uh, this is kind of a nice pose to. Oh, this is better. Okay, so pose wise, I'll kind of I'll kind of keep a couple of these things in mind. Okay, um, I want it to feel very powerful. I want it to feel like there's a lot of energy to it. Um, but yeah, I want it to feel strong. So I'm gonna let's pull this over here. <laughs> Thanks, Quentin. <laughs> Your force reminder wasn't helping uh, this time. I guess I was out of touch. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. <clears throat> and in fact, we'll probably we will probably take this, and then we'll just version it up now that we've uh, gotten the uh, the facial expression in there. Okay. Try to move. 
move things around over on the other screen so that I can so that I can see what I've got so I can see the chat so I can see the uh, internet uh, pose reference um, let's go ahead and let's get started okay so the tool that I almost always use for posing it's always going to be practically always is going to be transpose master so I'll say t-pose mesh and there we go okay now let's see we're gonna turn on symmetry for right now <coughs> okay now there are some things that I'll probably change um, with the body as I go along but we'll see we'll see how it, how it goes um, <coughs> yeah so the thing that I try to do whenever I pose a character is I try to start posing around the head. Like I, I try to keep the head pretty pretty much, well, like straight, facing straight forward and backward. That way in case there's anything I need to change symmetrically, uh, it makes it a lot easier. So let's go ahead, let's grab this uh, bottom part of the head here, this neck. Let's change where our pivot is. Oh, you know what? I'm going to grab my iPad. Give me just a moment. Let's see. I okay, yeah, that was for a different character. I thought I had sketches that I had done for this. Maybe I didn't. Oh, I did it on my phone. I didn't do it on my iPad. <laughs> I forget because I was out and about. So that was uh. Yeah, I always I always try to keep uh, Procreate on my phone so that it gives me an opportunity to be able to um, so it always gives me the opportunity to be able to kind of quickly sketch something out. In fact, let me kind of bring my window back out so I can see. It gives me the opportunity to kind of sketch things out with my finger, um, just really quick and rough. If I uh, if I get an idea. <laughs> while I'm at the grocery store or whatever. So yeah, that's kind of the idea. And you can see you can see there's kind of like this uh this pose kind of like try to see like what the side with the with the line of um the gesture line would be like. Um Yeah, so let's see. I'm going to try to take this. You know what? I'll keep that open. Let's see, let's take, you know what, let's take this whole thing and we're gonna move her just a little bit so that she's facing a little bit more down. And then we'll go ahead and we'll take these eyes and we'll rotate them up just a little, just so that it feels like she's looking at us. Okay, and those might have to be adjusted later, but you know, when you get started, when you're getting started with the pose, you do what you can. Yeah, let me see. Any shortcut for automatically set our UVs in you dimmed form or just manually place UVs in each tile? Yeah, yeah, so I usually do my UVs inside of <clears throat> inside of Maya just because it's, it's cleaner, it's easier, it's more reliable. Um, uh, although Pixelogic a few years ago had announced that they were going to, that they were working on a tool for UVs that I've been badgering them about ever since. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, they haven't made any prog. Well, they've made. I'm sure they've made progress on it. They just haven't. Um, they just haven't announced any progress on it. So. 
Oops, let's go ahead and take this. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Let's see, let's take this. Kinda, one of the things I'm trying to look for, uh, when the when the body is in this kind of pose, the back of the neck gets kind of straight, and it almost has like this curve down instead of like this curve out. It has like curves down, and so what I need to look for. <coughs> in fact, that looks kind of that looks kind of odd, and I wonder if it's because of my arm and shoulder placement. Kind of take away the. It does feel kind of odd. Here's what we're going to do we're going to take these breasts and we're just going to kind of adjust them a little bit. In fact, I'm trying to decide. How to go about working this gal here. Kind of put her in something like this for now. And then we can go ahead and we can take the legs. And we can start to move them forward. Now there will be some, you'll, you'll notice that like as I'm doing this, it's like rounding out in here. There will be like naturally some rounding out in there as you're pulling up because like the the skin and the fat and the muscle, everything in there, um, it's going to be kind of like the skin's going to kind of, kind of uh, smooth everything out that's happening through there a little bit. Um, but I still want to try to get it so that it has a little bit of a ah you know what I'm trying to figure out now I think what I'm feeling now is more of instead of like a like a fly forward or like a like a like a legs forward sort of thing. I think I think my, what I might do is take one leg, and and kind of pull it up just like in front of the other, kind of like what we had with what we have with this. This is really cool. So we'll do that. Make that my new reference image right there. So I won't be going into Substance Painter, and actually I don't, I don't have Substance Painter on my machine anymore because my uh, my license expired, and I haven't made the transitions over into Adobe Painter yet. Um, but um, but yeah, with this being a a Pixelogic stream, uh, the tools that we try to focus on have to do with just ZBrush. Like I, I'll sometimes, I'll probably uh, sometimes even duck over into um, into Photoshop for for some things, but that'll mostly be things with like uh, um, with like compositing images and renders and things like that. give her a little bit of like a like a slack here on her on her leg and this uh, this foot will have to go back I might wait until later to do that um, I think it might be easier to just work on handling this uh, this other leg handling the leg poses the big things while I'm here um,
Okay, so we'll bring this forward. Kind of trying to make Take some of this stuff here. And it's kind of actually just pull this back. And then we'll just pull these a little bit, kind of reshape them some. Some of what I'll do while I'm while I'm posing is I'll go through and I'll I'll make some progress on the pose and then I'll go ahead and I'll transfer it back over, and save, <laughs> and then come back. Um, oops, 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 oops. Turn off symmetry. Okay, something like that'll work pretty well. In fact, something like this. This might be a little bit too aggressive. So let's go ahead, let's kind of pull this over here like that. Okay, something like that. I think that'll work pretty well. Then we can come down here, let's 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 do these feet, cause why not? Why not? Why not? No, maybe not. Let's wait until we get over to the other image, so that way we can. Uh, <laughs> that way we can go ahead and um, use the poly groups. Pull this down and in so that we have a little bit more of a uh, crease happening between the leg and the and the torso. Yeah. No. <coughs> Let me see. Ibrahim. Will older version of plug-in work in 2021? Um, I think so. I think so. I think generally generally speaking, I think most plugins are forward compatible, kind of like with like a like a video game. Like if you have like a PlayStation or a, a I don't know I don't I don't know these gaming systems very well Xbox or things like that. Like if you have like that like an original Xbox game. It works in what's the newest one? The Xbox One. <laughs> uh, it'll work in the Xbox One. It'll like work in the Xbox 360. Uh, but the Xbox One games won't work in the Xbox 360. It won't work in the original Xbox. So, uh, so things like that. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's the case. Uh, if if not, then I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, right here, what I want to do is I want to give the, t the top of the torso just a little bit of a twist. Oops, let's kind of put this in the center-ish. Oh, you know what, I'm going to want it to go the other direction. And hey, I want to even kind of tilt it off to the side a little bit. With the uh, with the hips, we're also going to want to tilt them. And you can see we're already getting a little bit of tilt here because of how the. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, did you answer? I was going to get food. Uh... <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, I did answer. Um, 
That's okay. I can answer again. Yeah. So uh, to my understanding, uh, most plugins are forward compatible. So if they're from you know, ZBrush 4R7, um, then, you know, you should be able to use them in current version of ZBrush. Uh, but, you know, for instance, if you're developing a tool or a plugin or uh, a brush or a base mesh or anything like that in a newer version of ZBrush and you try to take it to an older version of ZBrush, that doesn't work. Okay. So similar to how, you know, video games work, you know, that the... Uh, uh, the newer systems can take the older games, but the older systems can't take the newer games. Um, hope that makes sense. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad you got it that time. <laughs> Let's see, let's take this arm. Hopefully all this starts to make some good sense once we... Uh... As, we, as we move forward in this pose. The shoulder is going to need to be like kind of re-sculpted. You can see how it, how super terrible that uh, <laughs> how super terrible that shape is getting. <laughs> and even the the breast is being kind of pulled on right now. So that's there's going to be a lot to. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll 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 do the arms when I get back into the uh, when I get back into the other mode. Uh, we do have some things over here that we can kind of tweak. Um, this bit of the shoulder here is going to probably pull forward some. Uh, again, we'll, we'll worry about this a little bit more once we actually get into... So I've got to make sure that I don't have anything hidden, nothing masked. Let's transfer that pose. She is looking fierce. And there will be some things that I need to go ahead and work with um, underneath the, the chin here too. For instance, the, uh, and we can turn on symmetry for a minute. Uh, this little bit right here needs to kind of come out and create a little bit more of like an arc kind of coming down here. Because what's happening is that her chin is coming down toward her neck just a little bit. And so there's going to be a little bit of a bunching up of like the muscle and the skin that's happening, you know, whatever anatomy is uh, underneath her chin there. Uh, you know, skin and tissue and, and fat and all that stuff is going to be kind of, kind of pulled back, bunching up just a little bit. turn off symmetry now that we've uh, now that we've got this going on okay so now we can start working with the pose now the shoulder uh, like I was saying it's going to have to be really kind of reworked in order to fit the pose that I'm wanting to, to give it but that okay and we'll start to pull this up um, and we'll we'll clean this up we'll clean this up 
So one of the things, the reason why I'm wanting to do this character and I'm wanting to do It's like I feel like there's a huge um <laughs> a huge miscommunication about what the Statue of Liberty represents. I feel like it's being twisted to to represent, you know, Americanism is, you know, pure, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> it gets very political. And there are a lot of things, but it's like, you know, the, the plaque that she carries says, bring me your, you know, <laughs> bring me your sick and your wounded and your, I can't, I can't remember the, the words verbatim of what it is that it says, but it's a very welcoming thing. And I think of the Statue of Liberty I think of Lady Liberty as this warrior for peace and good of all mankind and you know irrespective of 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 borders of race of religion of you know all these different things and so I wanted to do this as as a statement on my end for Oops, I think that got a little bit messed up. Um, as a statement on my end. You know, because I, I really, really hate the things that I'm seeing happening down at the Texas border right now. Um, <laughs> the things that I'm seeing happening just really everywhere. It's, it's a nightmare. It's definitely a nightmare. And I feel like I feel like the things that are happening are not what America is supposed to represent. And so to see those things happening, it's just it's horrendous. It's absolutely horrendous. It there's there's no excuse. <laughs> you know, even something as simple as like, you know, the uh, the coronavirus vaccine, you know, it's like <laughs> there's too much going on and people are you know dismissing themselves from it for religious reasons or whatever it's like yeah please brutality it's not supposed to be you know that's not american <laughs> but it happens way too often um there are so many different things and i think that lady liberty would be one of those that would stand as a as a warrior for the peace as a warrior for for those who have no voice for those who oops don't want that don't want that either You know, it's, it's, there's just, there's just way too much going on out there where people are not being considerate and compassionate and <laughs> just kind overall. And so that's what, that's what this piece is going to be meant to convey is this, uh, is the power of liberty um is not in you know true patriotism is not in shutting others out or separating families or treating people unjustly it's just it's stupid it's stupid it's like i get messages all the time of like uh of like you can't possibly understand what this is like because you're a white American it's like you know, just because I don't understand your point of view doesn't mean that I don't understand it or that I don't uh, care or that I don't uh, light starting to get past my little blockade
and you know as as much as I might not understand some specific person's point of view I try to understand it and, I, and if I don't understand it I still try to be compassionate you know and I think that that's that's the miracle of Lady Liberty. I think that that is the real flavor, the real essence of what America is supposed to be like. You know? There's a lot going on. And it's heavy. <laughs> it's really, really heavy. I caught a little bit of light in my face. Hopefully it's a little bit less. The The sun's kind of going up right in front of me. And so it's like <laughs> I had to move my, I have a sheet like blocking part of my window, like a, like a piece of paper blocking part of my window. Thank you, Quentin. Yeah, I'll go ahead and save that now. Um, yeah, I have, I have a sheet on my window on my blinds to kind of, because I, like at somehow at this time of day the uh the light from the sun feels like it wants to shine directly in my face right through the teeny tiny little holes that where like the the strings from the blinds go up <laughs> someday when i'm like a kajabillionaire <laughs> i'll have a nice house with real blinds that don't let the sun in <laughs> curtains I don't know look at curtains when I was living in Chile we never had blinds uh, we only had we only had curtains if we no, actually I don't think we even had curtains we had a, we had a couple of places where we had curtains uh, but most of the time we had we just like hang blankets because that's what we had ¿Cómo te fue? <laughs> okay, so a lot of what I need to fix, things like this, and the way that... See, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be aware of kind of what's happening with like this deltoid. This deltoid needs to be kind of rounded out here on the top, especially since like here on the top, it's going to be kind of flexing a little bit to kind of raise that arm and, you know, the, the torch that she, that she'll be holding. Ooh, we're going to get to use stager today. <laughs> <laughs> stream at night yeah it'd be nice too but at the same time I like to sleep at night so <laughs> you can't have your cake and eat it too but you can't have your concha and eat it too Woo! <laughs> tapping with that smooth brush okay now anatomically some of the things that are happening in here let's kind of pull this back and in some there's going to be kind of an overlap in muscle forms so like the this is this is this spot this this area right here this is where the um, this is where the uh, the pectoral muscles are kind of running up into the shoulder, up underneath the arm. And so we're going to have a little bit of that sort of, uh, that geometry kind of flowing and mushing together. So we need to be careful about how we control it so that we get the right, um, so we get the right forms, so we get the right shapes coming in here. 
If I want to, I can go ahead and solo this out, control one, so I don't get the teeth and the eyes and everything. She's angry. Took away her body, so now she's angry. <laughs> out a little bit maybe I think that's coming out maybe a little bit far just gonna kind of pull that back and in a little I'm gonna pull this uh, my my Z add intensity on my smooth. Pull that really really bad, uh, really far back. Let me see. I enjoy sculpting at night, nice and cool and quiet at night. Yeah, for sure. Except that you know, here in LA, it hasn't gotten cool at night yet. <laughs> It's still like it's like maintaining, especially these last couple of weeks. It's been maintaining a really really high temperature at night, like over eighty degrees, and it drives me nuts. I know I get I know it's better than it is in some places. Yeah, granted, you know, down along the uh, down along the uh, the equator, you know, it's like getting higher than that at night. <laughs> you know. <laughs> And, uh, you know, places in, well, so I'm up in the valley, uh, I'm up in the San Gabriel Valley and it stays really, really dry. Uh, so it's, it's really not, it's, it's bad. <laughs> I hate the humid. I hate, well, I, I like, I enjoy the humidity. Um, but you know, to a point, right? To a point. Let's kind of pull this down. Okay, so since that's coming up, I'm trying to feel like my own shoulder and kind of feel kind of what it is that's happening. South Africa, oh, I want to see this. Uh, if it's hot, we can, I get a couple of moist towels and a fan. That, that helps a good suggestion I don't have any fans though I need to get some fans we've, we've been talking about getting like a little space fan for this little area since this is the area that I work in like I have I have my computer here and I have my work computer over there um, and so yeah it's like I'm in this area all day every day and having some kind of fan would be nice but I keep forgetting and uh yeah i don't know my birthday's coming up next week so maybe i'll get myself a fan for my birthday <laughs> i need more fans okay i'm going to try to use this little bit of topology here as kind of like the base for that for that deltoid okay so i'm just trying to kind of clean up that flow, clean up how how it transitions right in here. I'm just trying to make sure that my my lines and my edge loops go you know, pretty clean back and forth. That'll help to keep a nice clean shape when it's subdivided. down okay, something like that
getting a little bit better of a transition through here too. That shape is still really sharp and I'm, I'm, I'm debating whether to keep it that sharp or to kind of smooth it out some. Let's smooth it out some. see let's go ahead and let's use the damn standard and we'll just kind of brush that in just a little bit just to make sure that that's getting and eh, it's not really getting quite the effect that I was hoping for let's let's pull it back some let's smooth it out that's looking much better let's use this standard brush and we'll just kind of pull that out smooth it we use our alternate smooth to kind of get it to to preserve the volume and form a little bit, and boom, golden. Okay, smooth out some of these transitions through here. Okay, lots of work going into just one little joint of the body, but it's totally worth it <laughs> because that's the that's the kind of attention to detail. That's going to help make this really shine and really work. Um, eventually, hopefully before too long, I can finish posing and I can move into uh, working in uh, working on the uh, what's it called the uh, the torch the clothing. Let's kind of pull this up a little bit. Let's kind of smooth that out a little bit, smooth that out a little bit. Let's kind of pull this in just a, just a smidge. There we go. Definitely get a fan. <laughs> uh, is the Twitch chat visible to him? Yes, it definitely is. Uh, not one of those crazy stalker fans. Though. Yeah, definitely not getting one of those crazy stalker fans. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am just uh, I am just focused. Uh, I try to I try to get over to the chat every uh, every couple of minutes or so. Um, Cause you know it, it, that's one of the that's one of the fun things for me with with streaming is being able to connect with people. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this and we're going to have to fix the uh fix the knees, fix the space behind the knees. And you can see how it looks really like noodly. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's going to have to be fixed a little bit. <laughs> Don't blow my cover. <laughs> pull this out a little bit one of the things that I can do um, that's that's sometimes really helpful when I'm posing is I'll come over here and I'll say poly groups and hit auto groups hit auto groups again there we go just so that we can see that they're different um, and this just makes it a lot easier when I'm posing because uh, then I can just really quickly and easily make a selection of a poly group instead of having to worry about selecting the whole thing I'll especially have to do that once I go in and start doing hands because you know you'll see like if I select the thumb piece right here it's also selecting that and if I'm not careful um, it'll also um, 
uh, it'll it'll move the other piece of the of the finger you know the other the other finger from the other hand um and it gets really really messy <laughs> like comically messy <laughs> Um, but this becomes really helpful for when I want to be able to make quick selections of things like the uh, like the feet and be able to uh, be able to modify some of these things like this. Which is a little bit much. Dude, are you guys excited for the ZBrush Summit coming up next month? Got like a month until the uh, you know like three or four weeks until the uh until the zbrush summit 2021 uh, anybody going to participate in the sculpt off like even if you're even if you're afraid even if you're afraid or nervous or like like you feel like you are too much of a beginner i would say totally do it um it's definitely one of those things that you know, like like speed exercises it's one of those ways of being able to to have like a focused a focused attack on specific techniques you know so like for instance um my first zbrush summit sculpt off was 2016 um it was awesome it was such a good experience and one of the things that I really loved about it was that I you know I was put into the hard surface side I was put into the side that I didn't apply to um, but they came back and said they had an opening on the hard surface side and wondered if I'd be interested in joining and I was like duh <laughs> I was like that'd be great I could do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was awesome it was so stinking cool uh, because one of the things that it allowed me to do hey Jace how you doing buddy um, one of the things that allowed me to do was to learn different hard surface techniques uh, inside a ZBrush which have been tremendously helpful for me in, in doing all sorts of things um, you know, I've 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 since gone on to create some you know, some some fairly successful pieces using hard surface modeling techniques, and I've been able to push those techniques even further. Um, trying to decide if this feels like it's going the way that I want it to. Uh, the neck needs to be kind of kind of fixed so that it's going toward the body a little bit better. Here and kind of pull this. I want to pull this forward just a little bit. Is that what I'm hoping for? Maybe pull this forward just using my move brush. Um, but yeah, and then being able to to learn those techniques and and practice those techniques, and then uh, being able to get it so that I could create something in three hours. Um, that was, that was tremendous. That was huge. Um, and so I, I super recommend it. Like I, I always try to try to get my students to, <laughs> to participate because I feel like it's such a huge, um, just a huge opportunity. Let's see we can get this uh, this other arm going I do want let's let's go through now since we're working on these arms in pose let's go ahead auto groups auto groups auto groups auto groups and I'm just trying to like snake back and forth so that I Oops. Auto groups so that I can keep track of where I am and I don't have to worry about 
uh, missing a piece. So what it's, essentially what it's going to do is that it's going to take these uh, pieces that are not um, that are not connected by a by a um, topology since it's since everything else is hidden it's just going to auto assign polygroups to those pieces so super super helpful in fact now I've got to check because I lost track the rest of this finger oh, it looks like we got that got that sweet let's grab that thumb then let's do that there we go so that way that way the arms are now set to be asymmetrical and so are the legs so that's nice um <laughs> you convinced me i'll put my name there um how did I get my Daisy Duck to be so clean? Daisy Duck was awesome. Um, I, I work much in the same way uh, with like low topology, so that it was you know so it's easy to keep it nice and clean. Um, and then you know so you know as you as you subdivide, you know, subdivisions are so much smoother than DynaMesh. So yeah, that's something to to kind of keep in mind. It's really really nice. Um, any tips for posing and maintaining smooth transition between shapes? It's a lot of it's just going to be kind of working and reworking. Uh, it's like as like as you've been able to see, hopefully with with my process. I mean, there are all these different forms in here with the the shoulders that I had to to kind of fix. You know, this the shoulders one of those one of those places where there's going to be a lot of resculpting to get the to get the forms to be nice and smooth and and, and proper. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's definitely well worth it to kind of just take your time and you know, just be patient with it. Um, yeah, it's great. Let me see. Is this even live? Yeah, this is definitely live. No, it's not a it's not a replay, I promise. Uh, seems like. Uh, do you stream too? Oh, you stream too. Cool. It's a cool username, by the way, ZBrush Princess. <laughs> uh, I started a ZBrush a week ago. I'm looking at streams where I can pick up some knowledge. Awesome. Oh, well, welcome. <laughs> yep, don't give up. Definitely something where you. Uh, oh, finally, yeah. I I don't. I'm not. I'm not like constantly looking at the chat. I have to be looking at the screen in order to work and do stuff. So if I don't get to your comments and questions right away, sorry. <laughs> Brother picked out your username, huh? I'll tell him thank you. <laughs> he has enriched the world. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. My uh, my username is smartest. S M A A R T I S T. Um, and the way that I came up with that was because S M A are my initials, and then artist, you know, it's artist, you know. So put it together, it's smartest. You know? <laughs> like that. <laughs> so it's fun. It's fun. And I try to be a smart artist like an educated artist you know <laughs> like not just knowing you know, tips and tricks but also knowing like why certain things are a certain way you know and being able to figure things out like that so um yeah i like to be educated it's helpful smooth that out a little bit okay this little bit let's kind of pull this over just a little bit here in fact that might be a little bit too much let's kind of angle it out right there I 
Now, with her bum, since this leg is kind of coming back a little bit more, I'm probably going to give a little bit more volume to this cheek. It feels like it's a little bit flat, so we're just going to pull it out just a little bit, because what's happening, there's going to be a little bit of compression here. Okay. And so the muscles from her thigh are going to be kind of pushing it up a little bit uh, into, into her glutes. So that's going to be good to watch for. This other leg, because it's being pulled forward, it's actually going to be stretching this side out a little bit more. So I'm just going to smooth it some to, to kind of make it feel a little bit more like that muscle is being stretched. Okay. Take this a little bit in. Something like that. Okay. So yeah, little things like that kind of help to help to pull the anatomy around and make it feel a little bit more believable. Um, let's go ahead. Let's work on this other arm. What the? Kids are so fun. Let's make sure that that's completely unmasked. And we'll just soften it out a couple times, soften that out. Okay. Let's, I need to put something in here for her to hold so that it makes sense. Uh, so that I can, you know, kind of pose it to an object. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna use, we're gonna start to use Stager to be able to get these things working. Okay. It's a new, uh, it's a new tool inside of this, uh, inside of this version of ZBrush inside of 2021.7 or 21.7.1. One. <laughs> if you've upgraded yet, I, I haven't gotten around to upgrading to that yet. Um, but, uh, you know what, one of the tricky things here, I think I might need to actually take the hips and rotate them down a little bit. Mask that. One of the things that I think is happening is that like it's it's getting too long over here and not long enough over here. That feels a little bit better. I mean, there's still some like form things to to tweak out over here, but and we still have to work on the knees at some point, but <laughs> we'll get to that eventually. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, let's go ahead. Let's uh, let's append a piece. And it doesn't really matter what we append. We can just add it in there because what I'm going to do select it let's say initialize and I'm just going to say one 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 Q cube Q cube okay make it about the thickness of a of a book yeah I I haven't touched that model uh, since that day, Jace, I actually requested uh, Pixelogic take down that stream so that just so that it kind of avoided the fun of you know <laughs> everything that was happening that day. That was stressful. It was disappointing because you know it wasn't intended that way, and you know it's but you know it's. Whatever. I mean, I've 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 learned since then that you know intent doesn't necessarily outweigh impact, and so you know regardless of what my intent was as the artist, um, it, it had an impact, and you know it wasn't the impact that I was looking for, and uh, there was just enough backlash from it that I decided to just kind of get rid of it so so 
yeah. I try to keep things positive. I try to keep things fun and light, but you know, when there's when there's that kind of reaction to it, you know, it's just it just takes away from the fun. So I decided to not even worry about it anymore. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's make this book piece here. Let's see. I'm trying to look kind of in in relation to the character. That looks like that'll be pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to keep this where it is. Now, here's the really cool tool. So what we're going to say, and I've got to I've got to remember exactly how it how it works. So here's the home stage. Okay, so this is where I want it to go back to so I can work on it. And then what I can do, I can take this up. Yeah, it is sad, but you know, I, I try to be understanding. I try to be understanding. So let's put this, let's make sure it's not going through the hip. Maybe make it so that it's touching the hip, but not, maybe it's a little bit off. We'll leave a little bit of room for some clothing to kind of go through there. Um, and we'll say target stage. So if we switch stage, now we've got this uh, back into a place where we can, where we can work on it. And we switch stage again, and it's in its position. So, poof, awesome. Um, Statue of Liberty, that's what we need to look up. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's funny. That's funny. Check this out, guys. <laughs> And that's in Vegas, but you know, it's still kind of funny. Um, little sister arrives in the US, huh? Wish I could get a better image. Okay, so this tablet has kind of a couple little notches in the top. Oh, that looks like that'll be a good image. Uh, open image in a new tab. And then it's got like the date. The date of Independence Day, you know, July 4th, uh, 1776. Cool. So yeah, what we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll add in these notches. And what we'll do to be able to add in those notches, it's really quite simple. And it looks like we might need to make it a little bit thinner too. So let's go back to uh, that home stage. And then we'll kind of skinny it out a little bit. Uh, let's pull in some Z modeler. Skip that. All right, and we'll say insert multiple edge loops. And it doesn't matter a whole lot that we have the different poly groups. We'll just make it all one poly group. And then we'll say extrude. We'll say poly group island just because you know makes it a little bit easier. Pull that out. Oops, pull this down, boom. And then we'll just kind of angle that out. It's not, let me see, it's not perfect. Let's see, let's see kind of again. Yeah, it needs to be a lot closer to that end. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's make it so that we have it about to where it's supposed to be. Uh, width wise. And then we'll just take the rest of it and kind of pull it out. Feels like it might be a little bit high too. Let's check this again. Maybe a little bit. So let's grab that, pull it down. Switch stage, boom. Super cool. And let's see. Just to kind of check some proportions again. Um, Let's take the whole thing, make it a little bit skinnier. Oh, you know what? Let's make it a little bit shorter like that too. 
switch stage. And then in order to reset the, ta the target stage, I'm just going to go ahead, let's move it. It's okay that it's intersecting the arm for right now because we're going to move that um, and adjust it a little bit more. Okay, or do that. And we'll just restore our target stage. So we should be able to get back and forth between these target stages just fine now. Okay, super cool. Super cool. In fact, just to be able to make this so that it feels like um, like that tablet, we're just going to go ahead, MRGB, color, fill object. That way we have it so it's got like this gray sort of stone feel to it. And we'll hit save <laughs> to appease the saving gods. Started before August. Love the Pixelogic streams. Yeah, I love the Pixelogic streams too. It's it's really really uh, fun to kind of go through and see the ways that other artists work. Um, it's 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 awesome. And yeah, and like like you're saying, it's a it's a fantastic tool figuring out how how it works. Um, the UI is a little bit interested. It has a ton of different tools. I really keep it like simple. I keep it at the vanilla level like like just 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 plain simple original out of the box setup because uh because i teach classes and because i stream and so it's it's a lot easier for people to uh to see what it is that i'm doing if they if they have it in a familiar spot uh, or at least in the original spot where it would have been and you know I've been new using it this way for almost 10 years now so it's like <laughs> no point in changing <laughs> Mm -hmm. I love water guys water is so good okay let's go back to this and I'm going to start if I can turn off dynamic again because it drives me nuts um, that's one of those things that I, I wish that I could uh, I could have Z modeler work without dynamic mode um, just because I think that for me personally in my workflow it would be significantly easier <laughs> okay let's go ahead and smooth that out and then we'll go ahead and pull this and then we'll take this in here like closer to the to the neck area and we'll just kind of rotate it out a little bit One of the things I gotta try working out now is getting the uh, getting this elbow kind of pulled up, um, and then I gotta make sure that like I'm trying I'm trying to pose to the tablet, and the tablet's probably like too big anyway. Let's see. Let's look at that in, in connection with like the head. I mean, it looks like it's like a head and a half high. So, you yeah, know, maybe it's not too bad. I'll leave it. Yeah, it's, uh, I think I think the thing that, that is really daunting about ZBrush when you're first starting, it, it's not so much that the, uh, that the UI is confusing, it's just that there's so much. Um, like I, I, I came over to ZBrush from Maya um, and and one of the things that I that I really like about the ZBrush interface is that things are in folders that make sense you know so like stroke you you know you can find things that have to do with the stroke that you're laying down or you know on the brush you have different modifiers and options for your brush or you know color or you have you know, layers and lighting and all these different little little tools, preferences, um, 
draw is one that never really made sense um that i i can never you know kind of pick in um in simple words like what you can find inside a draw um i do know that you can open it if you hold alt and click on the perspective <laughs> or some of these other uh, uh these other icons over here to the right um you can close it too if you hit the uh if you hit the camera buttons or the perspective with alt um yeah it, it, it's it's one of those things where i feel like um yeah yeah i feel like it's actually pretty pretty nice and pretty pretty well thought out Oh shoot, that was nasty. <laughs> okay, I don't have a ton of time left on this, on this stream. Um, I'm only technically scheduled till um, till ten o'clock. Um, the next streamer is Brendan Isaiah. He is awesome. He does. He does. Um, characters and creatures for video games and he's just he's great he's so great um but he's not coming up for another three hours something like that this is this is how i like to do my elbows by the way guys like when i'm when i'm going through and kind of fixing things so i'll go through and i'll, I'll kind of pose it hard with like a hard transition and then i will you know, come over here and, and kind of pose the halves individually and kind of sm like create that arch. So you can see it's, it still has a long way to go. Just kind of smooth it out a little bit. There we go. It helps to ease that transition there quite a bit. And we'll just smooth on the other side. And then we can kind of adjust right here. If we wanted to have this be a, a sharper transition, we just kind of make sure that that works a little bit sharper. Okay, so in this position, so, okay, so, so let's look at this real quickly. In this position, we have the arm kind of elongated, and, and <laughs> thanks, thanks, Quentin, we'll, we'll save. Um, we have the arm elongated forward, and, and she'll be supporting her torch, right? Um, so we have the triceps, they're just kind of, they're kind of elongated, and they're not, they're not really holding or supporting anything so it's not being flexed so this is just kind of an eased curve down here uh, but we do have a little bit of like a like a raise right here with the bicep because the bicep is having to hold that arm in, in position uh, and holding that torch so the arm or uh, the, uh, the the bicep the shoulder and then some of these flexors up here in the uh, in the forearm are also going to be um, engaged so um, but what I'm trying to look for with that shape is getting a little bit more of a um, of like a like a like a directionality, like a force of action, and so like I'm getting like this this kind of straighter edge here, and then a little bit of a slight curve here on the back. And what that's doing is that's helping to to make the arm feel like it's it's moving forward a little bit more, and it gives you the the idea of kind of like what the anatomy is doing underneath. Um, and we'll we'll play around with some of these shapes in here a little bit more as we as we go along, but uh, but yeah, for now that's where we're that's where we're at with that. Okay, so we've got this going on. Let's kind of bring down this this orange border a little bit, so we can kind of strengthen this shape and reinforce this shape instead of letting it be just the elbow by itself. Um, it's a little bit. Too, like protruding too much so let's pull that in pull that in now because this arm with this arm we're going to have kind of the opposite of what's happening with the other arm we're going to have the back of the shoulder muscles engaged um, we're going to have 
the uh, triceps engaged, and then we've got to have the um, we've got to have that forearm kind of kind of twisted a little bit. Uh, do I know Charles? Yes, I do know Charles. Uh, I've actually worked with Charles before at DreamWorks. Uh, he's awesome. I love him. Great guy. Great, great guy. Um, and he's a great artist too. Really fun, clean work. Um, he's actually a big reason why I got into DreamWorks. He he really pushed and plugged for me. It was it was. Uh, um, he was a big advocate for me. It was really good. Um, yeah. Do you know? How do you know Charles? <laughs> rid of this real quick for just a second just so that I can unmask those fingers <laughs> nice yeah 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 he, do, he does teach at Anim school okay so what I'm seeing right now is I'm going to need to Let's, let's bring this up. I'm going to have to fix that elbow again here in a minute. Um, but this is going to be helpful for me getting this pose right and getting the tablet into a, into a position where it feels like it's working properly. Um, so let's do this. Let's go ahead, unmask that. Oops, oops, oops. Okay, there we go. Um, Kind of pull that out just a little bit. And then with this hand, we're just going to kind of rotate it forward a little bit. Yeah, it's funny. It's like I don't think I've ever actually gotten the opportunity to watch Charles work. It's uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to. Maybe I'll have to sign up and take his class or something. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Uh, it's nice to have people like that in one's life to keep the positivity. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, positive. Just positivity is just a huge thing, and it's something that everybody definitely needs in life. Okay, I'm going to take that. I'm just going to kind of edge this into into place here and one of the things that I'm excited about with this pose is getting more wrap on the pinky than on the on the on the index finger you know that's it's gonna be kind of a cool kind of a cool thing there uh, with the with the hand pose so I'm looking forward to that. Here, let's do this. I'm going to take this and kind of pull this in here. One of the things I'm trying to be very careful of Yeah, that that should work. I'll have to I'll have to kind of play with take it and pull it out some yeah you know what let's do that let's kind of let's kind of tweak it so that it's more in this sort of position some 
something like that. Let's hit target stage so that it's got the new the new target stage. Are you using a concept? At this moment, no. Um, at this point, I'm I'm really kind of just uh, sculpting kind of from my from my mind. Um, yeah, the concept is it's it's purely my own. Um, Let's go ahead, let's actually do something like this. Yeah, it's not super uh, super often that I uh, that I sculpt like this, uh, where it's, you know, where it's all kind of just done on the fly. Um, most of the times I'll, I'll do more sketches and, and figure out what it is that I want to have, what, I, what it is I want it to look like. Um, this time, I, I, haven't, I haven't really done a whole lot of that. I mean, I had a couple of sketches that I did um, early-ish on, um, a couple days ago. In fact, one of the things I want to do, probably before I finish, before I finish the stream, is get some hair blocked in. <laughs> and maybe some clothes. <laughs> and this oops although saving is probably a good idea for right now it's gonna push this in push this in I'm trying to think because her her stomach is going to be flexed and I think because it feels like it's more flexed off to this side it's going to like this uh, these stomach muscles are going to be more engaged over on this side so it will probably do something like that so that feels like she's got some some pull over there and we'll just kind of tighten some of that in there so that she feels like she's got a little bit of anatomical change going on in there with the uh, belly button range belly buttons are fun like I feel like I feel like if you can add a belly button nice and clean to your model <laughs> it's just fun <laughs> it's just fun <laughs> and I didn't have one modeled in so you know might as well um, might as well kind of play with it a little bit gonna kind of pull this out a little bit uh, one of the things I'm trying to trying to do is work out the way that these muscles are um, contacting each other uh, I don't want them sending emails or texts or no I'm just kidding um, yeah I'm just trying to to make sure that I'm getting some good some good muscle uh, contact through here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's work on refining that elbow back so that it's so that it's better. And 
just kind of pull it up. That might be about right. Let me let me let me check. Let's go ahead and smooth this out. Bring it up, smooth it out. And I want to try to I want to try to match volumes from one side to the other. So I'm getting like this. Uh, so I'm getting something similar on each side. It looks like I need. Let's see. I do need it to be a little bit flatter on top than on the bottom, but that's a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and grab this orange. We'll bring it up some. Let's uh, mask this out. And then we'll uh, smooth it out some. Yeah. It's funny, it's like whenever I do my posing demos for my class at Nomen, um, I never get, like I never do poses that are this complex. <laughs> it's just too much. Um, Yeah, it's because it's this sort of pose. Like it's it's very involved. There there's so much going on with it that uh, that we need to be like super super careful. Make sure that those are masked out. And you know why not? We'll we'll make sure that these are all masked out too, just to make sure that I don't get any kind of weird deformation with it. Um, I want to take this, and just move it up just a smidge. The hand has been a little bit deformed since I was moving it around some. So I'm just going to kind of smooth it out. Maybe raise my intensity up some. Yeah, polygroups are very, very helpful. Very interesting piece. Is the color specifically paint, or did you? No. So, so the uh, the colors uh, that it has right now, these are polygroups. Um, it just makes it so that I can select different uh, different parts of the mesh. Um, yeah, it's it, it's 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 super super helpful. It's a great way to work. Um, it also makes it so that I can mask and move specific parts of the mesh without having to worry about moving the whole thing. Um, so yeah, polygroups are super super helpful. I love polygroups. Um, the uh, the actual skin looks more like that. So this is some, this is uh, you know it's got she's got some some rosiness to the cheeks. She's got some pinkness to her lips and color around her eyes and her ears and things like that. A um, little bit of rosiness to her fingertips. Um, nothing down below her. Uh, I guess below the neckline, really. There's a little bit of rosiness to his shoulders, too. <laughs> um, I'm going to take this. I'm going to try to work on this uh, this pose here just a little bit. Um, like we were talking about earlier, her, her triceps would be more engaged in this pose. I'm trying to shorten the... Um, Shorten the forearm just a little bit. I'm also trying to fix the forms to the bicep area so that it's not so flat. 
because I mean there's going to be some some flex to the to the bicep because it's trying to hold up the forearm which is holding up a tablet so there's got to be some flex to that but there's also going to be some flex to the to the triceps as she's um, as she's kind of pulling her her arm back you're going to see a little bit of uh, a little bit of form increase there okay just trying to keep it nice and subtle okay getting some better shapes in here It's always just playing, and there's a lot of back and forth when you're playing, but it's kind of part of the process, and it's just fun, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Let's kind of tweak that so that it's got a little bit, pull that form out a little bit away from the elbow so that it's not right next to it. And it just feels a little bit too swollen. So let's go ahead. We're going to kind of tweak that. Yeah, there's a lot of good back and forth. All right, that's looking better. gonna head out well it's great to have you thanks for tuning in <laughs> hola que onda <laughs> onda pasión com <laughs> como te va Try to. Oh, shoot. There we go, that's a little bit better. And then try to, like, give this a little bit of a bend here. Just so that it feels a little bit more energetic, a little bit more uh, gestural. Let's get some hair blocked in. Let's say append. Let's just get a sphere in here. And turn on symmetry so that that's so it can be the same on both sides. And then I'm going to open up my. My reference for Lady Liberty. Let's kind of bring her. I'm going to bring her over to the other side so that I can. Oops. So I can have her reference to check out. Okay. So she's got some some pretty cool hair. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to make it to the to wor working out the crown right now. And in fact, this piece. It feels like there's like kind of like two top pieces here, so we'll have to see what we do about that, but let's kind of start working this out. This is a piece that I will prop like with hair, um, when I'm trying to like just block something in, I will sometimes come over here and I will say geometry, uh, dynamesh, turn on groups. And let's turn down the resolution so that it's not so packed. But with the hair, I'm going to try to pay attention to a couple of things. Like, like like shape language is going to be a huge thing with hair, and and it's it's a it's a trickier place to worry about shape language because it's got so many layers and it's so complicated. Um, 
but a lot of what you're going to want to look for is just like getting your overall shapes in there and then working within those shapes to to get to get your forms to get your structure to get your shape language to get your uh, medium details inside of the larger details you know and you start with the with the bigger pieces and then you work your way out okay I'm liking that so far that's kinda cool Okay, that's looking cool so far. So the reason I use groups is so that as I um, as I add extra pieces, it allows me to keep those pieces from merging together. Um, super helpful. And it just allows me to kind of work in a more clean sort of way. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and start adding in some... It's like she has like these... Uh, curls maybe I need to let's, let's get some uh, some views from a different angle here in just a second I am in primitives so I made my own I am in primitives brush it's so much more useful to me <laughs> than uh, than the pixelogic brush oh shoot um, but yeah I mean People have their preferences. Let me see. I'm going to say extender. Let's pull that out. And then I'm going to say accept. Let's go in here. Make sure that's got its uh, subdivisions there. We'll say uncrease all. And then we'll come up here and we'll say bend curve. Oh no, oh no. So I guess we'll just sculpt these into place then. Something happened that it totally got screwed up, so let me see. I'm gonna see if we can find a good um a good side angle. That's that's kinda cool. I mean it's weird, but you know it's kinda cool kind of see the side. It's not the right statue, but it's an imitation. Imitation. I'm going to see if I can get this something from a different angle. Pull that over to my other side so that I can look at that later. Here, let's say head. Oh, there we go. Back when it was being constructed, that's pretty. That's pretty stinking cool. Oh, that's great. That is great. Do we have bigger pictures? Yes, we do. Oh, looks like it's from Wikimedia too. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna save that picture because this is a great picture that shows some great detail to it. Okay. Cool. Let's go ahead and Control W. And then what we can do is we can come over here and we can say uh, deformation polished by groups. I'm just going to uncheck that. Boom. Oh, let's turn on local symmetry. And then I'm just holding alt and I'm pulling out along that blue and it's going to scale in every direction except for um, the direction that it's pointing. <laughs> Pull that up and in. 
something like that. I'm just going to kind of pull those out, make them a little bit bigger, and eh, maybe a little bit smaller. Let's see. Okay, so I want to duplicate this out. Boom. Just like that. Okay. So it feels like what's happening with the um, what's happening with the hair is that there are these curls kind of coming out from this sort of area, and then I'll have to kind of um, let's say auto groups, let's say geometry, modified topology, mirror and weld. Okay. It feels like there are a couple of things happening. So it feels like with this uh, section of hair, it feels like there is kind of like this, like this flow of the hair kind of coming up from the sideburn area and over into like the back where she where it feels like she has like a couple of buns kind of kind of occurring back over here so what I'm gonna do let's grab this oh you know what we could just control click and drag smooth it out some and then this is where I'm just going to kind of play with shape and try to figure out kind of what it is that I like and I won't be holding so much to exactly what it is that I see I'll probably reference it some but um, but at this point what I want is to really just Just kind of play, just figure out. I'm getting some some flow from uh, the directionality of the hair and where it's coming, where it's going to. Um, okay, it feels like it's a little bit too top heavy. So let's, let's do this. Let's go Control Shift A, Control W. So that way it's its own poly group. I'm going to take this and pull it down. I like that. These curls. I'm going to pull this up so that it kind of comes out from behind the ear a little bit. Just kind of kind of play with this. I want to try to make it so that it feels like it's got some some movement to it. And it might be just a little bit too, I don't know, this is just a block in piece, so it's not really supposed to feel like the hair quite yet, but uh, yeah. Let's grab this other piece and I'm going to have it so that it feels more like it's coming from about right there. And that's starting to feel kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to up my Dynamesh resolution. Let's go up to the 32. Yeah, we'll leave the blur in there, sure. So yeah, you can see like because I had the groups turned on, it kept everything separate, but it's still dynameshing it. So it's dynameshing the groups. So that's why uh, that's why I have the groups on. That's why that's why that's working. Hmm, I don't know that I. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want this to work.
leave it at that for now. Let's kind of do some, some sculpting on this hair just to make it feel a little bit more like it has volumes. Okay, and then this kind of flows up and in there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use something like that. So we'll take this, we'll kind of build it out. And then we'll take this, and I need to make it feel like this is kind of coming out on top. Um, so we'll just kind of use our clay buildup and we'll use kind of like the, uh, the alternative function to kind of push this in some just to give us a little bit of like a, like an, um, a layered sort of effect here. One piece kind of going underneath the other. The easiest way, I guess, to be able to get that would technically be to go in and uh, make it so that it's its own poly group and so that it's its own piece kind of sitting on top. I'm gonna leave it kind of like that for now. So from right here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to service kind of these ideas of these planes going through the hair. Uh, right now, if you look at it, I mean, it's it's not quite to where I want it. So I'm just going to kind of tweak it some to, to match more of that sort of a spot. Um, but this is one of those things that I was talking about earlier when I was talking about um, you know, shape language and getting the shape language to kind of carry into the hair. Um, it's a tricky thing to balance and play with, but it's one of those things that is so well worth it. It is so worth it. Just kind of cozy it out a little bit. Do some kind of sculpting out there. Uh, this little bit underneath, let's kind of fill that a little with uh, with this piece here in the back. I kind of like that pentagonal sort of shape there, so let's let's keep that for now. Maybe that'll be kind of like a like subliminal message from the back, you know, like the Pentagon is supposed to be behind <laughs> the force of freedom and they need to step it up and they need to, you know, stand for people and stand for people's rights and things like that. We'll, 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 we'll say that it's going to be a subliminal thing. <laughs> so far I think I'll probably go until about 11 o'clock about another half hour so I'm trying to think I want to be able to get some form of clothing in there so that it feel so that she doesn't feel so too new <laughs> you know <laughs> um, here's what I'm going to do I am going to take this, the body, I'm going to duplicate it out, let's bring her all the way to the bottom, we'll say delete lower, and then what I'm going to do, oh, I don't want to use this mask, I'm going to use the mask pen, let's add another couple of subdivision levels, 
delete lower. And then I'm going to kind of draw on a couple of pieces of clothing here. These pieces won't be, you know, perfectly smooth, but that's okay. Uh, the main idea, in fact, let's uh, let's get rid of some of these pieces over here. And we'll get rid of. the upper arms just because we don't need them and we'll get rid of the legs here too modify topology delete hidden okay so now we can go through here and we can pull out some clothing I'm going to try to do Yeah, okay, so it looks like there are a couple of layers. I'm going to do a couple of layers then. But I feel like, yeah, let's, let's see. Let's make, let's make this piece one piece. Kind of like an undershirt, if you will. Technically, yeah, let's just, let's just do this full thing here. So yeah, there are a lot of different ways to go about kind of creating clothing, and this is just going to be an example of a way. Um, let's go ahead and get that whole thing masked there. Get this all masked out. I'm just going to go ahead and say delete hidden. Okay. Now with this piece, what I want to do is I want to start literally sculpting clothing out of this. I'm just going to make this a different color so that it stands out. And then we'll just kind of I'm not even being super careful with it yet. Um, I'm just trying to get it so that it feels a little bit less um, form-fitting. Kind of add in some rough wrinkles and all that anatomy work that we cared about earlier. We're kind of blowing it out the window. <laughs> increase our smooth okay and then with the with the sleeves I mean she has these like uber powerful sleeves and I think what I'm going to do is, let's say close holes, okay, and then these holes are going to be filled with the same polygroup, so I just want to make sure that they're their own polygroup, uh, at least for the opening of the sleeves, so that way I can kind of pull this out, make it bigger. Just kind of smooth it out just a little bit so that it's uh, so it has a little bit more resolution in there. Kind of give it this pulled back effect here. Oh, you know what? Here's what we got to do instead. Instead of smoothing it out 
I'm going to use Z modeler and we're just going to insert edge loops here so that, that way I can go ahead now I can smooth and, and get a little bit better of a result but this way I have edge loops that I can use um, in order to better control um, better control kind of the uh, the wrinkle adding so here's what I'm going to do let's go ahead let's say oops let's turn off dynamics so that it's not messing with me anymore just kind of pull this uh, pull this fold up and out of here like that really really easy okay this is why this is why low topology is such a blessing okay so so neat because oh, the mask stopped that's why Let's kind of bring this down so that it's a lower level smooth, like a lower intensity smooth. Let's kind of inflate this just a little bit through here so that it kind of fills that area a little bit better. Okay, so there's a start of a wrinkle. Just grab this and we'll kind of pull that down. And then we'll invert, we'll grab this, and we'll pull this down. Yeah, all sorts of things that you can do with uh, with edge loops. And you can see like kind of the effect that it's starting to get okay it takes a little while and that's fine because we're here for it <laughs> okay so there's some uh, there's some slack there to the uh, to the sleeve Topological, so that way it doesn't affect the other side quite as much. All right, we'll kind of pull that out some. Now the nice thing about doing clothing is that once you get kind of a kind of a decent base in there and once you, you get it so that it's looking pretty all right, you can go through and use Z remesher to be able to to really kind of put it into its into its place. Um, clothing is one of those few options where I will actually use Z remesher. That and hard surface. <laughs> um So her body does have UVs, and actually her body has UDIMs. Uh, this this base mesh is one that I have available uh, for purchase on flippednormals.com. Um, let me show you guys if you want. That way you guys can um, let me see. Yeah, flip normals. Right here. Uh, let's see. View. If you guys wanted to be able to to check it out or you know get it for yourself, there's you know it's it's there on flipped normals. 
Um, it's also on ArtStation and, and places like that too. Um, Gumroad, really wherever it is that you want to be able to <laughs> to find these things. Um, view profile. I don't know. It looks like it looks like uh, ArtStation's having a sale right now, so that's kind of cool. I'll share you guys this link right here. So yeah, this is the this is the mesh that I used to be able to create. I'm pretty sure I have a couple of images here. Yes, yeah, similar mesh to to this one that I used to be able to create this witch, um, and it's the one that I made specifically for this project. Um, similar similar topology setup though so uh, really really cool really fun so yeah I mean I guess if you guys are, are looking for you know a base mesh that's animation ready has UVs uh, it's on sale right now it looks like so kind of cool uh, looks like it's 20% off so dig in <laughs> see let's grab this and I'm going to kind of try to tweak this so that it feels like it's fitting the arm a little bit better right now it feels like it's really like too loose and I'll have to play around with it to get it to feel like it's um, To feel like it's being tossed and like all that. I did see the new art station challenge. I'm looking forward to it. It starts starts for uh, for the 3D side of it next month, right? Uh, the, is it the 10th? So we got just a couple of weeks here. Um, that's pretty exciting. Um, I was I was so ecstatic. Uh, I I got an honorable mention with the last one, and that was uh, it blew my mind because I'm mean, I'm always I'm always trying to win something, right? Like I I, I never win, uh, but I finally I finally got something, you know, with this last one, and that was it was great because it was something that I was trying to. Mom, you guys come see my I was I was trying to do something super different, you know, something different stylistically, do, do something that would stand out, doing something that would you know, be different from my other work and things like that, and, and it worked. <laughs> so, you know, taking risks. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. through here and just kind of build up this uh, just another little wrinkle here I guess just trying to add you know, more believability more folds because this uh, this this fabric I believe feels like it's supposed to be pretty soft you know so I'm trying to be No idea what's going on, like why it's giving me some weird artifacting in there, but you know, we'll fix it. Um, let's do something kind of like this. I'll have to fix that in later, I guess. I have no idea why it's uh, why it's doing things like that to me right now. It's kind of kind of odd. Cool. And yeah, so since this since this fabric is supposed to be pretty thin, uh, there will be a, a decent amount of folds. 
and I want to think about what kind of material I'm working with um, because if it's a thinner material it's going to have more folds and then if it's a if it's a thicker material like a leather or like a canvas material or things like that then we're going to have less folds are going to be thicker folds yeah let's see this I can turn off the hair for a minute sure so that's what the uh, that's what the head's looking like Tried to keep it fairly, uh, fairly simple. You know, good edge flow for um, for deformations, for animation. Okay, we got the loops going around the the nose and the mouth to be able to create laugh lines at some point. Uh, uh oh, save. <laughs> um, uh, I've got loops going around the eyes for you know smooth uh, control over. Um, eyelid deformation, same thing around the lips. Um, I have loops going for the nose, for the eyebrows, uh, for the ears to be able to control plane changes. Um, yeah, and then different things down here to be able to control deformations and 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 anatomy forms down here in the neck. Um, you know, same things with like fingers. I have elbow and elbow. Uh, loop things like that yeah try to keep it try to get some some good um, some good definition points um, a lot of the things that I that I have learned um, Topology-wise, for characters, comes from things you know, meshes and characters and things that I've worked with in my time at you know Warner Brothers and and at uh, DreamWorks and at Disney, um, specifically Disney. I really like the things that I was able to see while I was, um, you know, with the character meshes that I was working with at Disney. It was it's nice. I really like their their stuff. Actually, I just saved. <laughs> Thanks, Quentin. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> Everybody needs a Quentin because, man, be lost without you, buddy. Okay, right here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get kind of a flow of these uh, these shapes, and maybe the flow needs to happen a little bit more once I get. Um, the edge loops in here, but oh, you know what? I think I want more edge loops than that. Yeah, let's do this. We'll say Control W just to give it its own. Ah, oh, and I didn't even pay attention to that totally forgotten that I have the other set that also has the same poly groups. <laughs> so at Disney I was in Imagineering um, but I worked with a whole bunch of different assets from animation and from um, from ILM from um, Pixar uh, all sorts of things that I that I got to got got to see and and study and work with, and that's one of my favorite things about working in the industry is being able to study uh, different people and their different workflows and their different you know um, their different setups. It's it's so helpful.
yeah. Wherever you go, wherever you work, try to take those sorts of opportunities to, to study and learn from what it is that you're working with. Okay, so as I as I create clothing, as I create folds in clothing, uh, some of the things I'm trying to think about is points of tension and points of compression. I try to think about uh, directionality and gravity and things like that. So, like for instance, right now, um, she is raising that arm up, and she's raising the other arm back, and so those points are going to kind of create this um, this kind of pull kind of pulling the the fabric up and so we're going to get some fat some folds kind of radiating out from that shoulder um, so I'm just trying to kind of add some some stuff in here um, we're also and so I also have some some folds kind of coming across the breasts and things like that uh, it's really helpful uh, on the back, similar sort of idea. You know, we're going to get like folds kind of coming across. Um. <laughs> Am I late? A little bit. Um, um, I'll be wrapping up here in the next 15 minutes. Um. How'd you end up working there? I ended up working at Disney because um, right as I was wrapping up on How to Train Your Dragon at DreamWorks, um, I um, a friend of mine at DreamWorks told me that someone that he used to work with there was now at Imagineering and he was looking for a modeling artist uh, to be able to work on stuff for Disneyland Tokyo. And I was like, cool sign me up you know so talked about uh um talked about uh yeah so we so you know went ahead and interviewed and it was like months <laughs> it was like three months before i heard back and said great we want to talk to you we want you to start monday well you know all that sort of jazz right um Yeah, so it's kind of funny from that standpoint. But uh, but yeah, so then I started uh, started working there, and up until just before the pandemic, that's that's where I was. Um, the pandemic, as it was starting uh, over um, in Asia, that's where my most of my projects were was you know over on that side of the world uh, over in japan and so you know as things were going getting bad there that's that's kind of when i got when i was let go um and my projects were given to you know the the couple of artists that they kept <laughs> um Yeah, it was a uh, it was a hard time, but now I'm at Netflix, so you know it's you know you 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 win some, you lose some, and you get some in return. And in any case, I've got great friends and great projects going in in parks and uh, all over the world, and it's it's really fun. I'm really excited about the stuff that I did for Tokyo and for Paris, and I can't wait to be able to share some of that stuff once it uh, once it hits parks. Let's go ahead. I'm going to take that. Let's kind of build that fold up here. I'm going to take that, 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 just so that I can kind of control this fold here a little bit better. Um, it's 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 like it's it's losing too much. Um, too much volume around the arm, so I'm trying to be careful to 
make sure that I don't lose so much that it's you know that it starts to, to go through the arm right Help you decide whether to add which folds. Um, oh, you updated your ZBrush, nice. <laughs> yeah, so the folds are going to come in a lot from you know based on high points and gravity. So so these uh, these shoulders are creating high points. Okay, and the way that they're kind of being pulled, you know, the breasts also create like a like a high point. So I'm trying to and and PS I, I saw the comment about the bra. I don't think I need to study bras for this particular project. <laughs> um there's uh this particular character actually does not wear a bra, so that won't be necessary. Um Just as an FYI, I'm not going to ignore your comment. <laughs> um, but I do need to make sure that the forms are proper and the right shape. So losing too much roundness with them, so we'll to play with them kind of make it so that it fits right and so that it makes the right shapes um, otherwise it's gonna look wrong um, um, so I don't I don't always like to use things like the uh, like the cloth simulation stuff inside a ZBrush. Um, shoot, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this, this, and this. And then, yeah, so Marvelous Designer, I, Marvelous Designer is, is great. Um, I started learning it back when I was at Warner Brothers Games. Um, I haven't used it or tried to use it even since then. Um, but uh, in order to get into using the dynamics, like the cloth dynamics here inside of ZBrush, um, that does take quite a bit of... Um, Quite a bit of time to really get it to feel right. Um, I'll probably use some of that at some point, but I don't think I'll use it today. Um, I think I might actually add a subdivision level here to this so that it's more sculptable. Um, Yeah, one of the things that I like to to play with is just just sculpting, just freeform sculpting folds. Um, just because I feel like it gets me a very organic feel. And what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this is I'm, I'm yeah, just thinking about high points. Um, and the way that the fabric kind of stretches across the body. Or I'll even say across the form because there are, you know, you can have, you know, curtains. You can have, um, yeah, you, ha you, can have, you can have cloth and cloth type meshes in all sorts of contexts, you know, wrinkles on like a sphinx cat or an 
on an old uh, person or a wrinkly elephant or you know different things like that all sorts of things uh, kind of give you those sorts of folds so it's uh, it's important to think about context and what the material is and different things like that um, see exporting for marvelous designer I I wouldn't be able to speak to that um, <laughs> how old am I I will be turning 33 this year this next week actually <laughs> answer question Yeah, so I think I think that's kind of the uh, the best that I can answer your question, Ibram. Um, being able to get you know get, being able to get folds and things like that. It's it's really just about kind of going over it thinking about high points, thinking about your material type. Um, and then it's always good to have reference to. Um, right now, I'm kind of just making it up based off of different principles that I know of like, you know, where, where the, uh, where my high points are, where are the tensions coming from, and you know, there's still a long way to go to be able to make this feel right, but it's it's working. Let me see, I'm going to come up here to my stroke. Let's turn up this lazy radius. Okay, I don't need to sculpt the whole shirt. Uh, the this uh, this undershirt part of it is going to be kind of hidden um, underneath the the over robe that'll go over top and we'll probably use some of the dynamics for that but I think that uh, yeah I think that I think that that that's something that I'll get to at a different on a different day maybe next time um, I like how this one's turning out so far I think that she's got a lot of potential and you know she's already starting to feel powerful even though she's in the very very early stages okay uh, to be able to finish off this shirt though what I'm going to do is I'm going to oops let's grab select rectangle I want to grab just the uh, polygroups that count here just so that I just have these okay then I'm going to say Delete hidden. Ah, oh, you know what? Let's actually invert it. <laughs> uh, do you think that being 20 years old is too late to start in the industry? No. I mean, that's college age. I mean, that's just fine. One of the things that's... Uh, um, so the the current art, you know, well, I mean, there there are a lot of people that I know in the industry that actually got pretty started pretty late. Um, uh, one person I work with, he's, um, I mean, he was stacking groceries on grocery store shelf, um, and he was doing that for years before he figured out, you know, hey, I don't want to be doing this. <laughs> 
I don't want to be doing this my whole life. Um, and so, you know, he talked to his wife and was like, hey, I need to, I need to uh, do something different. This is, this isn't, this isn't me. I want to be an artist. And she said, okay, well, if you can, uh, if you can do that and uh, keep us fed, then sure. <laughs> so he went back to school and he was maybe 30, maybe a little over 30, something like that. And he's worked on all sorts of things. And he's been on Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Um, he's, he's worked on, he's worked at Pixar. He's worked, you know, all over the place now and and he's doing great so it's 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 really kind of just a matter of you know figure out what it is that you want to do and and if you want to do it then then uh you know understand that it's not going to be easy but um but you know if you if you put in the put in the legwork you can you can make it you can do it Okay, I'm gonna take this now. No, it's not perfect, but it'll be easier to fix once it's been Z remeshed. Um, I'm gonna take this. Actually, let's put it up to the ten. Oh shoot! I'll leave everything else the same. That's fine. Oh, in fact, I probably should have turned on. Um, I might I might actually leave his name out of it because I I don't wanna <laughs> I don't wanna drop his name. Uh, do you do any pr portfolio review and critique? Uh, not very often, but people do send me their portfolios all the time and ask me for um, your feedback and things like that. And I I try to uh, I try to give some some feedback from time to time. Um, so I mean, if you wanted to, you could send me send me a link on Instagram or something, and uh, and I will try to get to you. Cause I, I like one of the things that uh, that I feel very fortunate about is that in my in my journey to getting into the industry, I had tons of people. Um, like I, I tried not to stick to one specific person for feedback <laughs> and that's that's really important because uh, because people are busy and and so you know the more people you try to hit up for uh, for feedback you know the more chances you have of actually getting good feedback and getting a range of feedback um, so so yeah I've, I've had a ton of people that have been extremely um giving and generous in their their time um helping me to learn and to grow so i i try to i try to pay it forward you know try to be helpful yeah so that'll be a nicer mesh to kind of play with here got some spots here that I think need to be cleaned up some uh, again I mean this area is going to be covered up by by different robes so I smooth out some of these areas some of these folds don't really make a whole lot of sense sometimes you got to go through and kind of do it and then you go back and look at it and it's like nah never mind <laughs> Let's go ahead and take that kind of pull that over All right, it is 11 o'clock and I am going to call it good right there. You know, she's a long way from, <laughs> from where I was fantasizing myself getting to. Um, No, I do. I do some feedback every once in a while on stream. Um, not very often, though. Uh, 
and maybe maybe it's kind of selfish of me, but you know, when I when I stream, I like to I like to try to to work and focus on on the project at hand, because I don't I don't get time outside of <laughs> outside of stream to really work on <laughs> personal projects, and so yeah, it's just kind of a kind of an opportunity for me to uh, you know to work and to uh, to do something. to do something for me. Um, gotta work on kind of those lines there, but yeah, that's kind of how that's, that's how that's turning out so far. I'm liking it. I think she's, I think she's looking great so far. I think she's got a, definitely got a long way to go, but and the neck looks really good from this angle, but it doesn't look so good from this angle. So I'm gonna to have to play with that. Since she's looking off to this side, this muscle is going to be a little bit more relaxed anyway. So it's gonna be a matter of kind of taking this in some. Um, but yeah, and especially since, you know, uh, live critiques is what I do for my for my class and for you know, other things anyway, so it's it's like kind of like a continuation of my my job if I'm going through and doing work during during my fun play session. So yeah, that's kinda that's kinda the, the thought behind that. That's why I tend to save feedback and critique stuff for uh for other times when I can when I can find uh some time to spare. That's better. That is so much better. Looks so much more graceful, looks more <laughs> accurate. Cool. Yeah, and then we'll just kind of give this a little bit more emphasis here. There we go. That's a little bit better. So yeah, still a long way to go. But yeah, she's coming along. Save before I forget to. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Let's try to go through a couple more questions and then I'll uh and then I'll uh, wrap up stream for the day. Let me see. There's a lady in my 3D art and animation diploma that's in her 40s. Yeah. If you have a passion and a willingness to put the work into it, that's a... Uh, yeah, it takes a lot of grit, but it's definitely something that's, that's worth... Uh, you know, it's definitely worthwhile. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Gilly. Uh, I appreciate that. Head on. Hello. Uh, what is this character that you're working on? So this this character is uh, going to be based off of the Statue of Liberty, uh, which would be kind of kind of fun. Um, but I want it to be kind of, you know, Statue of Liberty, like like the feeling of freedom and and America as it is intended, as it's as it should be, of uh, you know protecting the peace, protecting people, um, an acceptance and a love for culture. Um, you know where I feel like these days there is so much of a dilution of what it means to be American, and and there is so much hatred and discord and intolerance and all sorts of things going on and so like I'm wanting to kind of use art to express my uh, my hope for a stronger better America so 
yeah, anyway, that's that's kind of my my quick spiel on it. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm doing. And the reason why I don't use the quick save button, um, the quick save button goes through and saves a project inside of the quick save folder. Um, it doesn't necessarily save a file. And so it's really easy for my working file to get saved over or for me to lose work if I do that. Um, so yeah, I go through and I, I always I always use the uh, the save tool, which I which I set the the hotkey to be Control S, um, and then Control O for loading tool. But yeah, so really nice, really simple. Um, yeah, thanks, Gilly. Yeah, dude, thank you so much. <laughs> Sir, LOLs a lot. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Dude, thank you guys for coming. Thank you for having fun with me today. Um, hopefully it was helpful to you guys. Uh, I I always have fun. I tend to have fun when I get on stream and, and, and play around and do fun things. Um, hopefully you guys have a wonderful Saturday. If you are on the other side of the world and you're already hitting Sunday, then God bless you. You know, <laughs> Enjoy your Sunday. Um, I will see you around, um, again, just to, so that you're aware, two hours from now, uh, Brendan Isaiah, uh, he will be jumping on, he'll be streaming, and he does some awesome stuff, I don't know what he's been in lately, what he's been doing lately, but he is stellar, he is awesome, so feel free to check him out, and then, um, yeah, and then the Zebra Summit is coming up in a few weeks so if you are interested in doing like the uh the the sculpt off i say totally jump on it even if you're new even if you're scared uh, it's just a great way to kind of give you give yourself um something to focus on so that you can you can learn techniques and skills to apply to a specific thing so yeah super cool super fun and i'll see you guys next time i see you Smartest out.